Hi, folks. Anyone else get those tool marks where your tool enters and exits the cuts and think, how can I make a better part with a better surface finish that looks nicer that doesn't have those marks? Let's walk through five different ways we can edit and tweak our lead in and lead out to improve that process. So first off, here is the sort of traditional way Fusion handles a 2D contour finishing toolpath. We take a look at the simulation. I've noticed I've got show points on, which lets me click on a black point and adjust forward. We look at how the tool leads in. It does a little bit of a ramp, and then it starts walking around the cut, goes all the way around. By the way, each black point is effectively a line of G-code, which is a really cool way to think about how the cam kernel is generating your tool paths, you know, based on arcs and straight lines. But it gets back to the exact same spot here, this black dot where it started. And you can see as soon as it hits that spot, it starts to link out or lead out. By the way, when you pause your toolpath at any point along here, you can click on the info tab and you can see where exactly you are, what the program's feed rate is. And here we can see the motion is a lead out. Whereas when we jump back a little bit, we're on a finishing cut. And if we go all the way back to say here, you can see we're in a plunge or lead in. Pretty cool, can be really useful. First thing that you should always be doing is what's called finishing overlap. Edit our 2D adaptive passes, finishing overlap. I usually set ours to 0 0.05 inches and I do that on everything I ever machine. And if I ever did wanna change it back to zero, I'd rather edit it back to zero uh, but I'd like the default to be 0.05, so I right-click and I say Make All Default. Click OK. And what that does is instead of leading in and out at the exact same point, it just goes a little bit past it. Perfect. Simulate it. You can see we're going to come down, lead in, go all the way around our part, scrub forward, and come past that lead-in point and do a linking move out. Awesome. Unfortunately, that's not going to make it completely go away. Let's talk a little bit about why we get these tool marks. We created a fake single flute tool. <laughs> it kind of looks like a Pac-Man type guy, but it's going to show the problem at hand. Uh, and the problem is that we want to climb cut. Climb cut is the better way to use cutting tools with CNC machines, partially because it does a thick to thin chip. If you want to learn more about feeds and speeds, whether you're new to CNC or you're trying to improve, Go over to the NYC CNC website, we'll put a card here, and watch our speeds and feeds videos, including our basics video, where you can start to look at some examples of this, including chip thinning and climb cutting. But the reason we want to climb cut is, again, it starts out by forming a thick chip, and then as the tool moves forward, that chip thins out, helps keep it from tearing on the very uh, edge as it's done shearing through. But here's what happens. As we start to enter that cut, you'll know our tool's rotating and it's moving forward. So as soon as it first grabs material, the tool is going to pull itself forward, or rather it's going to push the workpiece back. So any amount of mechanical slop in your machine is going to manifest itself, or it's going to show up in that initial contact. And unfortunately, it gets really, really expensive to fight that. Uh, even really high-end machines can have instances where when you start that cut just ever so slightly, you're going to see a little bit of bite or tool mark. By the way, the other real trick on, on really getting good service finishes is making sure that tool sees exactly the same amount of material and chip load so that the tool deflection and tool pressure is exactly constant as you run around your part. So how can we improve our tool paths knowing what we just learned about climb cutting? One way would just be to add more lead in radius. Under linking, horizontal lead in radius. Horizontal lead in radius is the one we care about, that's this arc right here. The straight line is the linear lead-in distance. We've also got a vertical lead-in radius. Well, what is that and why do we have it? The vertical lead-in radius is the arc here going vertical. Now that doesn't actually have much to do with the toolpath. CNC machines, especially ones that move incredibly fast, are just like a car. You don't bring your car from 100 miles an hour directly to a dead stop, crank the wheels all the way to the right and then start again. Cars and machines like to have fluid motion. So while this machine is moving down, it can then do a fluid transition move and it helps 
create a more subtle toolpath. You can literally have machines that will walk themselves around a machine floor because there's so much vibration or jittery because they're moving so quickly. Smooth motion. See that? Nice and smooth. But it's the horizontal lead and radius that I care about here. I've increased it to one eighth of an inch. What that's going to let it do is have a better chance of when it starts to engage the material of kind of taking up that backlash or that mechanical slop sooner on so that hopefully by the time you fully engage, it has settled down. Now this partly depends on how much stock is around your part, so it may not do the trick. Let's try another trick. Move your starting point. Why would you start in the middle of a, of a huge face where it's going to be more likely that someone notices it? Let's cheat. Let's pick a transition point, a hard chamfer or fillet on the corner. Edit, linking, entry positions, I'll delete mine, says nothing right now, come over, and I'll click that point. Notice you can click actual CAD points like this, which will put the toolpath right there, or you can actually pick just about anywhere, say right here. This can be a really important thing for two reasons. One, if you want to see where your tool enters and exits, say just for, for safety or you're setting up a job and you don't want that tool to lead in at the back of the machine where you can't see it unless you get a mirror out. Or you're trying to really make toolpaths more efficient. Say you finish an op over here, say just drilling that hole. I don't want the machine to move all the way over to the other side of my part to start the cut that it's going to have to go by here anyways. We'll set it to that corner. Now I did change one thing here. Aside from adding the point, I actually went back and reduced the finishing overlap to just about 10 thou because here I want it to be a tighter spot to the tangential lead in lead out of the start of this arc. So if we take a look at our tool path, jump forward, you can see it's arcing right about here. So there it's just kissing at about, just about the tangential point, coming all the way around our part, going over, and then going just a few thou past it as the lead out point. So this can be helpful for two reasons. One, it's often easier in my experience to blend in a tool path like this at a point where the part changes direction or has an angle or curve like this. The other reason you could do the starting point is put the lead in lead out either where it's hidden or put it somewhere where it may be easy to walk over to say a scotch bright wheel or blending wheel or somewhere where it's going to be more easy to buff it out or do something else that's going to help it be masked or in the spot where it doesn't really matter. Last one, probably my favorite is let's get creative. Let's do smart tool paths. So that I call this custom because edit linking. Normally it's checked same as lead in, which means it just duplicates your settings for the lead out. If we uncheck the same as lead in, we can control our lead out and make it different than our lead in. So what have I done here? Well, I've totally ditched that lead in radius. So we're not going to take any turns. We're going to go straight into our part. But I've also changed the angle from 90 degrees to zero. Lastly, mostly to accentuate it, I've done a really long linear lead in distance. And don't, don't laugh, I actually do this a lot of times just to see that I'm controlling the right variable. So make it some crazy big number, and then you get an idea of which, if you're controlling the right variable, and you can go edit it back to something more reasonable. My thought here was, let's have it go straight in a line so we're not doing a curve. And this can be helpful too. Depending on the type of machine you have, it can be beneficial to be just moving the machine in one direction, not having it move across an XY arc where you've got both your axis motors moving, but rather here, we're just say jogging in X or Y, lead into the cut this way. Notice I'm coming straight in go all the way around my part, and then when I get to the end, do a blend out or lead out. So there we go. We've got a little bit extra over travel. In fact, we could probably, let's get rid of that. Let's have it lead out right at that point there. Linking, horizontal, lead out radius is fine. Distance should be zero. Let's see if we can get that down. Our point is right there. Interesting, I am stumped. I like the lead in, we're good with that. But you'll notice if I go all the way around the part, when I get to the other side here, I can't get it to lead out right at that point. Here's why I know it's not a setting issue on my end is you'll notice as I start to get toward uh, where I hope it would lead out, we'll move over to the info and you can see the movement is finishing cutting 
it stays on finishing cutting here. It should have been leading out by now. And then finally it gets to there where it transitions to a lead out uh, movement. That would appear to me to be something like under geometry, what's called tangential extension distance, but that relates to open curves and I've got it set to zero. So it shouldn't be that. So I don't know why that is. Maybe a bug in the software, but hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed. It's awesome to make better parts. It's one of the takeaways I got from Autodesk University this year was how to make better parts, how to use the CAM software, your tools, and, and sort of machining processes to make really good parts. Super awesome stuff. Take care, folks. See you next Friday.